One of the most dynamic things about Jan that I've noticed from working beside her over the past three and a half decades is that you're gonna find in her that she can get in the boardroom with some of the strongest men, which is often the case, and she can go back and forth with them. And throughout that entire process, though, when she comes out of it, she's always been able to hold on to her femininity in that process. And you don't see that a lot of times. Now, people call me a boss. I ain't a boss. I like to think of myself more as the person who is the enabler to people growing to their own capacities. My name is Janice Bryant-Halroyd, and I am the founder and CEO of the Act One Group. You know, so often I'm talked about in a way of first, first African-American woman to do this, first female to do that, first black to integrate schools in my hometown of Tarboro, North Carolina. I'm not interested in whether or not I'm a first, I'm interested in my next. How am I building it forward? How am I paying it forward? That's what excites me. Growing up pre-civil rights, the most professional people I saw would be school teachers and preachers. So I had no idea of what a workforce solutions group could be, but I had the fundamentals of what it needed to be because I grew up in a community absent opportunity for so many people. And growing my business, no, I did not think about it as a child that one day she's gonna be the head of a multi-billion dollar workforce solutions group. Not at all. What I did think was that I'd make an impact in how people work and how life works for people. As I grew my business, absolutely there were challenges that I had to face. I've had to work twice as hard to get half as far. That continues in many environments today to be the case. And I'll say this, it's not always just in business that that occurs. It occurs in our personal, our socio and economic environments far too often than it should. You know, one of the things about growing my business, especially now that we are a global organization with over 2,000 employees and over 17,000 clients, is that we've been innovators in our space. We live in a world today where data is everything. Even in your organizations, if you're not delivering data, you're not relevant. So the technology is the thing for me. And with the technology being so intuitive, and so dynamic, there's no reason why any woman can't build her organization and think billions. I grew up thinking when I became a millionaire, I'd be successful. I'm not even happy on my journey. The experience of speaking for me is about how can people take what I've learned and incorporate it in their everyday lives. That's what really excites me. People talk about giving back. For me, it's not giving back because I ain't leaving my community. I'm gonna steal a part of it, okay? So I'm giving it forward. I do not believe the world was designed for us to have singular success. I believe we can individually fulfill ourselves best when we work for community success. As the mom, the very proud mom of an incredible African-American son, I care a lot about the issues that we've seen, particularly over the recent focus on Black Lives Matter and young African-American males and police brutality. Here's the thing that I will say. We are a nation that is still a very young experiment that does not excuse us from ill behavior any more than we would excuse a child from ill behavior. What it does do and what it should do and can do is teach us that we can continue to grow. Each of us only gets so many years on this planet. How we impact others and the planet itself becomes really important. So here's the thing about starting your own company. First of all, you need to understand that no matter who signs your check, you're writing it. So therein and of itself is that your personal brand is a business, whether it's inside of somebody else's incorporation or your own. The second thing is that the most valuable employee in your organization is not you, it's the people who are making that organization work the way you've designed it to operate. The next thing is that you've got to invest in your people. Investing in your technology, investing in your footprint is one thing. If you're not investing in your people, you are a losing proposition and it's just a matter of time how soon or quickly that happens. 
You know, today we talk about hacking, right? And hacking can be good and it can be bad. So we've all seen experiences where people have been hacked to the not good outcomes. But I think when I evaluate growing my business, I've actually done some hacking of my growth myself. I'm not about shortcutting your way to success, but I certainly support that if you can hack your way to success, hack yourself, don't hack others. The last thing that's really important is that you need to keep focus on who you are in that process of owning a business. Now, the way I do that is I live to my personal mantra, which is never compromise who you are personally to become who you wish to be professionally.